Okay, so we're going to have a look at a fun probability problem here. It's inspired by the difference between having mutually independent events versus pairwise independent events. So first we'll just talk about what the difference is between the two definitions, and then we'll have a look at a fun problem, and then we'll solve that. So just very first thing, if you've got a collection of events, maybe you've got events A, B, and C, they're pairwise independent if each pair basically are independent. So A and B are independent, B and C are independent, and A and C are also independent. And then a slightly stronger condition is rather than just being pairwise independent, they could also be mutually independent if the probability of all three happening is the same as the product of the three probabilities. And more generally, if you had just a general collection of events, they're mutually independent if for any subset of events, basically the subset behave like this, that they're independent. And you can come up with lots of nice sort of simple examples to demonstrate that it's possible to have basically pairwise independent events that aren't mutually independent. So we'll just go with an example I've picked here where you've got, basically you're picking uniformly at random from the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and your events A, B, and C are these pairs of numbers. And you can quite easily check that the probability of all of these is a half, and then if you look at the probability of A and B, this is basically the probability of just picking the number 2, so this is a quarter, and then you see if you multiply the probability of A and the probability of B, you get a quarter as well, so that means that A and B are independent, and just by symmetry you can do the same thing to show that B and C and also A and C are independent. So A, B, and C here, these are all pairwise independent. However, if we now look at the probability of all three of them happening, well, the intersection of A, B, and C is actually just empty. There's no number that's in all three of those. So the probability of all three of them happening is zero. So this isn't equal to a half times a half times a half. So we've got three events here which are not mutually independent. So there you go. It's possible to have three events, A, B, and C, which are pairwise independent, but they're not mutually independent because the probability of all three of them happening kind of lets you down and doesn't satisfy this rule. And I was thinking about this recently, and I was thinking, what if you try and have some events which are pairwise not independent? So A and B aren't independent, B and C aren't, A and C aren't. But then is it still possible to have that as a trio they kind of behave independently? So just a warning, this wouldn't mean that they're mutually independent but not pairwise independent, because mutually independent needs them to be pairwise independent as well. This is just sort of a little curiosity here I was wondering about. So if you're interested in trying to come up with your own examples, do pause the video here, have a think about this, otherwise I'll go into sharing my solution. So actually I found lots of different solutions to this. It turns out there's a lot of freedom and flexibility over what your probabilities can be. So let's just get a diagram here, so we can try and label all the different probabilities on our Venn diagram. And basically I'll talk you through my first approach here, which was, I thought I'd try just making some assumptions, see where it took me. So I assumed, let's say that the probability of A, B, and C, these all have probability at half. And then we're looking for the probability of the intersection to be a half to the power of three, so an eighth. And then we can label that eighth on the diagram immediately, which is nice. And then next I figured that while we might have some flexibility, all the probabilities are going to have to satisfy the inclusion-exclusion principle for three different events. So the probability of the union of all three, this has to be equal to the sum of the probabilities, take away the pairwise intersections, and then add the intersection of all three of them. So this is just sort of a standard result from set theory here being applied to probability. And then we know the probability of A, the probability of B, the probability of C, and the probability of the intersection of all three. So this gives us a half plus a half plus a half. We've also got a plus an eighth there, so we'll add these together, deal with those later. Then, next thing I did here was, I thought, okay, well, let's just try the probability of A union B union C is equal to 1. So that gives us 1 equals to all of this stuff on the right-hand side. And on the diagram there, we can fill in a 0 then, if we're saying the union of all three is actually got probability 1. And then what we can do is we can rearrange our equation here. You'll find that 5 eighths then is equal to the sum of the probabilities of these intersections. And then what we could do next is, if we want it to be nice and symmetrical, so you know, ideally we'll find a nice elegant solution, let's say that these three probabilities are all equal. So then you're looking for a probability of 5 24ths for the probability of A and B. And you've already got 3 24ths in the very centre there, so you just add in another 2 24ths or 1 12th there, and then do the same for each of those. So now we've kind of filled in so that the probability of A and B, the probability of B and C, probability of A and C, these are all 5 24ths, so we add those, that gives us our 5 eighths. So we are satisfying the inclusion-exclusion principle here. And then this is really nice because now we know that we want the probability of A to be a half, probability of B, probability of C, these need to be a half. And then we can just fill in the remaining numbers, which if you do the calculation with the fractions, you get 1 over 24. 
So there you go, we've got another example then where if we check this really carefully now, the probability of A and the probability of B, the probability of C, these are all a half, but the probability of A and B, the probability of B and C, the probability of A and C, these are all 5 24ths. So when you multiply your two probabilities, you get a quarter, but this isn't equal to the 5 24ths. So these are pairwise, not independent. So none of the pairs are independent. So this means that we've satisfied our first condition, that pairwise, they're all not independent of each other. So A and B aren't independent, B and C aren't independent, A and C aren't independent. And remember, we set this up specifically so that the probability of A and B and C was going to be 1 eighth, which is a half times a half times a half, or the product of the probabilities of A, B and C. So this is fantastic. We've actually managed to show that there is such an example out there of this kind of, it's not quite mutually independent or pairwise independent. It's just sort of satisfying this fun kind of property we've been looking at. But unfortunately, I wasn't actually too satisfied with this example, because when I tried to think of a nice way of explaining this, you know, perhaps in terms of some sort of real-life scenario or a game to play, I couldn't think of anything too sort of simple or concrete that would make sense for those particular probabilities. I mean, do let me know if you think of anything yourself. I'd be interested to hear. But fortunately, I was able to think of some other examples. So I've got quite a nice one coming up where it does have quite a nice sort of scenario attached to it that hopefully feels kind of intuitive. So anyway, moving on, I did manage to find a few more nice symmetrical examples like this one. So here you can check that they're not pairwise independent, but then the probability of A, B and C happening is an eighth, and the probability of each of A, B or C, these all have probability a half, so it does satisfy this extra kind of condition. And this example here I'm particularly pleased with, so this is the one where I've managed to find a situation that kind of goes with this. So we'll just really quickly sort of check the numbers here, you can see that the probability of A, B, and C, each of these have probability a third. You can see that the probability of A and B happening is a 27th, which is no good, because if you do the probability of A times probability of B, you get a ninth. This isn't equal to it, so A and B aren't independent. And similarly, B and C aren't independent, and A and C aren't independent. And then, if you want to check as well, the probability of the intersection of all three is 1 27th. But then this is equal to a third times a third times a third and this is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C. So this does satisfy our kind of condition that we're interested in here. Now, what's the real-life scenario that goes with this example? Well, imagine you've got this very unlucky-looking dartboard here, split up into 13 regions, each of these are split into two, and you've also got a bullseye in the middle, so a total of 27 regions. If you imagine somebody throws a dart at this and they've got an equal chance of hitting any of the 27 regions, well, let's say that player A wins if this person hits any of the numbers between 1 and 4, or if they hit the bull. Say that player B wins if you get 5 to 6 or the bull, and player C wins if you get 9 to 12 or the bull, and nobody wins if you hit 13. So you can see here quite easily that the probability of A, B, and C all winning is just the probability of hitting the bull, which is 1 in 27. Then you can see the probability of A winning is a third, the probability of B winning is a third, the probability of C winning is a third. So it does sort of behave as a trio, A, B, and C, like they're independent, which is what we were looking for. The probability of A times probability of B times probability of C is equal to the probability of the intersection of all three. But then you can check that each pair, A and B, B and C, A and C, none of these are independent of each other, just as we were looking for. 